So let's recall motion of objects in one dimension. Let's suppose we have a ball that is rolling along the x-axis in one dimension. Now, let's suppose our ball begins at some initial position here and ends at some final position here. Now, we can talk about the ball's displacement average velocity or average acceleration. We can also talk about the ball's instantaneous velocity and instantaneous acceleration with respect to time. Now, whenever we're adding and subtracting vectors in one dimension, things are relatively simple because all we require is to take the algebraic sum and algebraic difference. But when we're solving problems, when objects are moving in two or more dimensions, things get relatively complicated because now we're dealing with vectors that are in two or three dimensions. Recall that vectors in two dimensions have two vector components. Vectors in three dimensions have three vector components. So adding vectors in two and three dimensions is not that uh, easy. It's relatively complicated. So, as an example, let's suppose we have the same ball, but now our ball is moving along our xy plane. So this is our path that our ball takes and the x-axis is time and the y-axis is position. Notice that as the ball is moving not only are we moving along the y-axis but we're also moving along the x-axis. So we have two-dimensional motion. So let's suppose that my ball goes from position 1 to position 2 along the path. So notice since my y direction, my y axis is position, the vector from the origin to this point 1 is my displacement vector r1. And from the origin to r2, this vector uh, given by r2 is my displacement uh, at point 2, at position 2. So what if I want to find my average velocity between point 2 and point 1? Well, in order to find my average velocity, I have to follow my formula for average velocity. So average velocity is equal to the change in my displacement vector divided by the change in time. So time is simply t2 minus t1 and my change in r is simply my r2 minus r1. Now because these two vectors are in two dimensions, that means we have the x component vector as well as the y component vector for each of these two vectors. So we can break down r1 into its x component and y component vectors and we can break down r2 into the x component vector and the y component vector. So now we can represent or replace r2 with this and r1 with this and we get the following result. So in order to find my average velocity between point 2 and point 1, in order to find the magnitude of this, this uh, resultant displacement vector, I simply have to follow this formula. So I take the difference between my x vector components and the difference between my y vector components. And I divide that by my change in time and that will give me my resultant vector that, that represents my average velocity. Now, what about if I want to take my instantaneous velocity? Suppose now I want to find the exact velocity at the point 1. So how exactly do we go about finding our exact instantaneous velocity at point 1? Well now we have to do what we have to do is move this vector and begin shifting it this way. So as the vector begins approaching closer and closer to this one value, we begin approaching our velocity or instantaneous velocity at point 1. Once again, in order to find the instantaneous velocity at point t1 at this point here, we need to take the limit of our ratio of change in our displacement vector divided by change in time. So as this 
becomes smaller and smaller, this becomes smaller and smaller. And eventually, when we take the limit of it, it will approach a certain value. And in fact, this value will be the slope of the line tangent to this point 1. So, once again, our instantaneous velocity is equal to the limit of this ratio as our change in time approaches 0, which is the same thing as taking our derivative of our displacement function at this point 1. And this is the value of the slope tangent to the point r comma t. So if this is the point we're trying to find. So once again, this represents our instantaneous velocity. So our instantaneous velocity is equal to the derivative of our displacement function, which is equal to, well, we said earlier that our derivative, or our actually our displacement function, if our displacement vector points in two dimensions, it equals to our um, sum between the x component and the y component where the x component is being multiplied by the i vector and our r, uh, y component is being multiplied by the j unit vector. Now we simply take the derivative, we distribute our derivative to both the rx and the ry term, so we get that our instantaneous velocity is equal to taking our derivative of our displacement vector as well as equal to taking the derivative of the x component vector and derivative of the y component vector. Now, let's suppose that our y-axis is no longer um, position but velocity and our x-axis is time. Now, if we do the same exact procedure, instead of getting our instantaneous velocity, we will obtain our instantaneous acceleration. So we follow the same exact procedure we begin moving our vector closer and closer and closer to the vector at the position that we're trying to find our instantaneous acceleration and eventually when we take the limit of it we get that our instantaneous acceleration is equal to the derivative of our velocity function which is the same thing as saying or the same thing as taking our derivative of the x component vector and the derivative of the y component vector assuming that our vector is a two-dimensional vector. Note that if we're talking about a three-dimensional vector, we simply add our final uh, vz term, our vector along our z-axis. So, notice the following. We just said that our acceleration or instantaneous acceleration is equal to taking the derivative of our velocity function. So what if we take our velocity function, what we found here, and plug it into this? So derivative of the derivative of our displacement function with respect to time, with respect to time, will get us the following thing. So another way of getting our instantaneous acceleration is taking the second derivative of our uh, displacement function. Also, we can say taking our second derivative of the x component and the second derivative of the y component of our displacement function. So, let's look at our example. So, let's suppose we have the following displacement function. So, r with respect to t is equal to 12t squared i hat plus 10t cubed j hat. So, this represents our uh, displacement vector with respect to time. So we plug in any time and that will give us what our coordinates of our vector is. Um, is. So find the velocity and acceleration vectors at time equals one second. So essentially, we essentially want to find our derivative of our displacement of RT that will give us our velocity function and then we take our derivative of the velocity function to find our acceleration function. So velocity is equal to derivative of our R function which we get so 12T squared derivative of this is 24T and 10T cubed is 30T squared. So the I remains I, the J hat remains J. So now we plug in 1, so r of 1, or actually, 
this should be v of 1. So v of 1 is equal to, so our vector is equal to 24i hat plus 30j hat. The 24 means our magnitude of the x component is 24, our magnitude of the y component is 30, so our vector points begins at the origin and ends at the point 24 comma 30. Likewise, let's find our acceleration vector. So we take our derivative of the velocity obtained here. So we have 24t, derivative of that is 24, and 30t squared, the derivative of that is 60t. So we plug in our 1 and we get 24i hat plus 60j hat. So that means our velo or our acceleration vector at the point or at 1 seconds is equal to a vector that begins at the origin and ends at the point 24 comma 60.